There is one company that always stood out to me on the NES above the others due to the company's large IB mascot that was included next to the logo, which at the time was very different from the other company logos that consisted of only text. That company was Hudson Soft, which also sticks in my memory because of the game Mylon's Secret Castle, which I always found interesting and fun, but always found myself getting stuck early on and was never able to progress. Still to this day, I have not been able to beat the game, but it's definitely on my list of games to tackle. Hudson Soft, like a lot of companies from the 80s and 90s, have fallen off my radar. So let's dive into the company's history with the help of the internet and Wikipedia and see what they've been up to on this episode of What Happened to Hudson Soft. Hudson Soft was founded by these two brothers and started as CQ Hudson, a business specializing in radio telecommunications equipment. They would continue this for a couple of years, but during the 70s, personal computer sales were taking off and becoming a way better business model. So Hudson Soft decided to switch gears from radio telecommunications to personal computer sales in 1975. Hudson Soft would continue watching market trends, and in the late 70s, a new industry called video games was taking off after the release of the home version of Pong in 1975. Hudson Soft would jump on this opportunity and once again switch their business model and add video game development to the company in 1978. When Hudson Soft started video game development, they would take a less than ideal approach and start pumping out video games in large amounts. However, the quality was very poor and they would find none of their games were very successful. They would continue this for a few years until in 1983 when they applied to become a third party party software vendor for a new video game console called the Famicom developed by Nintendo. Nintendo wanted third-party software vendors when the console released, but they didn't want to make the same mistake Atari made, where an abundance of games were released that were so bad it caused the video game crash of 1983. So Nintendo put rules in place to prevent companies from releasing quantity over quality by limiting companies to only five games per year. They would also restrict the use of sex, profanity, excessive violence, religion, drugs, and political messages in games developed by their third-party vendors. Hudson Soft would agree to these terms and would become Nintendo's first third-party software vendor. These restrictions would force the company to change their development process from quantity over quality to quality over quantity, and it would be a huge success. Their first game to release for the Famicom was Load Runner in 1984, and it would go on to sell 1.2 million units. A year later, they would develop another big hit with the video game Bomberman. If you want to know more about Bomberman, I highly recommend checking out my Brief History of Bomberman YouTube video. In 1985, Hudson Soft would start up the Hudson All Japan Caravan Festival, which was a video game competition using Hudson Soft's video games. These competitions were very popular in Japan, and at one point they had over 60 venues at once. Early in the competition, they would use shoot 'em up games such as Star Force, Star Soldier, and Starship Hector. They would continue using shoot 'em ups until 1992, except for in 1988 when the Power League baseball game was used instead. In 1987, Hudson Soft would collaborate with NEC and assist in the development of the Turbo Graphics 16, also known as the PC Engine in Japan. While the system was very successful in Japan, its sales would be poor in North America due to Nintendo and Sega already dominating the market. Over the next few years, Hudson Soft would create some decent games such as the Adventure Island series in the early 90s and the Mario Party series in the late 90s. In 2000, they would hold their last caravan competition with the exception of a surprise caravan competition in 2006 using Bomberman Land Touch. 
According to Wikipedia, in 2004, they would start a joint venture with Flying Tiger Entertainment and acquire 25 titles. You could be the judge, but I would say these 25 titles were your middle of the road mediocre games and didn't help the company all that much. The Flying Tiger Hudson Soft Venture would go on to develop 27 games, but none of these were big hits. In the mid-2000s, while the company was experiencing financial losses, the company would move their head operations to Tokyo. They would also lose several key staff members, the co-founder would resign from the company, and they would lose the creator of the Bomberman series. In 2011, they would also lose a veteran to the company who had been with Hudson Soft since 1982. The loss of all these employees was a major blow to the company. Most of the employees that left would transfer to Nintendo's ND Cube Studio, headed by a former Hudson Soft president between 2010 and 2011, to work on games for the Nintendo's Wii. In 2001, Hudson Soft would take a financial hit due to the collapse of their main bank, leading to Konami purchasing 5.6 million of the company's shares and becoming the majority stockholder. Over the next 10 years, Hudson Soft would work closely with Konami, with Hudson Soft primarily being a publisher and Konami handling the distribution. They would develop a decent amount of games during these 10 years, such as Bomberman spin-off games, additional Mario Party games, and a slew of other games. In 2011, Hudson Soft would become a subsidiary of Konami, and in 2012, they would merge with Konami after a voluntary merger that was agreed upon during a board meeting between both companies. Originally, Konami had intended to keep the Hudson Soft as a brand and even maintain their website. However, in 2014, Konami retired Hudson Soft's website and closed their offices. In 2015, Hudson Soft's office in Sapporo, Japan, which had long been their headquarters, was sold by Konami. According to Wikipedia, Hudson Soft also had a music recording label called Hudson Music Entertainment, which was absorbed by Konami during the merger. I don't know much much more about their recording label and felt it better to keep this video about the video game development side of the company. Hudson Soft will always be best remembered for its Bomberman series which still continues today. But like a lot of companies that hit their stride in the 80s and 90s, they just couldn't make it. Thanks for joining me on what happened to Hudson Soft. If I missed any key information about the company that you feel should have been included in this video, please post in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell like the video and follow me on social media thanks for watching and I'll see you next time